Yo, what's going on you guys? So today I'm gonna give you three tips for tight wooded shots in disc golf. Now most of these tips are gonna be more helpful for tournaments, but at least two of these tips are gonna be helpful whenever you play. All right guys, so we're at our sample hole. Now obviously this is not a real disc golf hole, but let's imagine that straight ahead through here, somewhere down there straight ahead, it's about a 300 foot and it goes slightly downhill. There's a basket down there and you kind of have to pick your line here. So there's a, there's like a spike backhand up here if you want to do that. You can also kind of throw a straight backhand. And then on the left side, just a couple like sidearm rut right there. Maybe even a wide sidearm rut if you want to go high. And even over the top, there's a couple, uh, there's a line there like you go backhand. Uh, I mean, you could go sidearm here too. There's tons of lines, tons of options. This is not even a disc golf hole. I mean, you can throw straight at it too. You'll just have to push through some of that brush. But let's pretend this is the hole. Comment down below. Out of all the lines you saw, which one is the best line? The answer is actually whatever line works best for you. Now, if we actually go off which gap is biggest, you can see that some of these top lines are pretty unobstructed. So I would have to say this line, throwing a backhand spike hyzer right here is probably the best line. You could even throw sidearm and second best would probably be way up here. Um, maybe a thumber if you could or a big big huge sidearm and then after that we're gonna be kind of looking at these like poke and pray lines but yes this would be the statistic best line um, if you've never thrown this hole now even if that is the best line that is a huge shot and if you're not comfortable with throwing that then it's pretty much a 0% chance that you get to the pin, right? Really what I'm trying to get at here is that no matter what shot is going on in the woods, you need to be confident and you need to throw whatever you've practiced, right? Even if it is some tight little line straight ahead. Um, if you know you've hit it before, then that's what you need to be throwing. You don't need to be worrying about what anyone else throws. Doesn't matter if Ken Climo throws this shot and he parks the hole. If you have parked the hole going straight at it, then go straight at it. That's pretty much what I want to say. Confidence is key in the woods because you really have to hit your line and there's no doubting yourself. There's no second chance. You either hit the line or you take a four or worse. Tip number two is, for me at least, when I'm playing a tight wooded shot like this, I don't actually watch my competitors throw. I look straight at the ground and I turn away. The reason for that is because if I see them, let's say for example, hit this telephone pole right in front of here, my brain is gonna say, hey, you know what? Even if you hit that telephone pole yourself, that guy who just hit the telephone pole, he's pretty good at disc golf, so it's okay if you do too. I don't even want that subconsciously in my mind at all. I just wanna know that, you know, I'm throwing my line, I don't wanna know what they do, and I know what you guys are gonna say, like, you should have eyes on the disc because you need to be looking for it. Now, usually there's a card of four, right? There's two other people who are gonna be looking. Usually you can at least hear what direction it's in. Worst case scenario, you guys end up looking for a couple minutes, right? Now, there probably are some circumstances where, yes, you do wanna be watching because maybe you don't have a spotter at that moment in time or something like that, and it is like a blind shot. Yes, then I would watch, but the majority of the time, at least personally, I don't even watch if it's like I gotta throw a tight line because I don't wanna be influenced by what line they're going. You know, if they hit a tree, you know, I don't wanna be thinking about all that. All right guys, tip number three is to know when to play it safe. Now we're inside because we're looking at one of the hardest holes on one of my favorite courses, Rolling Hills. Now this is hole 14. Out of all the holes combined, this is a shared tee pad, so there's only one pad. Um, it's like short and long combined basically, and this, shot right here is basically you just want to throw a putter 150 feet now there's a top level player in the area his name is pat burke he does it every time in a tournament he'll just throw his putter like 150 feet to the edge so he can play for an easy three now guys i don't know how i hit this shot but anyways the next shot where my doubles partner he hits it early this is pretty much what happens every time it's really hard to hit that just right and I got super lucky so what I'm trying to say is that you guys need to know when to play it safe now maybe I hit that shot on video but maybe that's like only a 10% to 
to 20 percent um you know hit rate that i get that shot because it's so tough of an angle so so tough of a hole so what i want to drive home is if you're not 100 percent confident with your line and you know there's a good chance that you're gonna mess up the line because it's so tough just grab a putter and throw it 150 feet straight 200 feet straight whatever you got to do play it safe now once you start getting better at the game your safe shots can also be shots that can still reach the pin now this is sometimes not possible but for example on hole 14 you know for a sidearm thrower like myself i can throw a safe driver shot and just let it fade on its own rather than having to think about okay how far do i have to throw it right i just throw it straight and let it die personally that's pretty safe for me almost as safe as throwing a putter shot because if i do hit a tree i still am at that opening but guys, you might not have this luxury every time you go to one of those tight wooded holes. But hopefully you can start learning when to play it safe and how to take advantage of those couple strokes that you might gain from doing that. Anyways guys, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below, did you learn something from this video? Are these tips helpful? And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more content. Anyways guys, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.